Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. Pearl of Dads. I've been getting letters. Everybody asking me, Wait, where's the Pearl of Dads? Oh, it's still around. It's right here. Yeah. And I'm going to be doing some trade talk today. Again, we just did Malkin. We traded Malkin to five teams. You might want to check that one out. Look at the reasons why we did that and all that sort of thing. And today, we're going to be revisiting sort of JT Miller. JT Miller of the Vancouver Canucks. We did a pre-trade deadline trade of JT Miller, and it didn't happen. And uh, I got letters again. We send you letters. Guido goes down to the mailroom, brings up the sack of letters all the time. It looks just like that. And he pours it all over the letter table and we read it. And we got letters saying, are they still going to trade JT Miller? Well, we're going to look at that. We're going to look at that. We got a couple articles that we can read between the lines with and figure things out on whether JT Miller is on his way out. I think probably we think he will be since we got five teams that he could likely go to, assuming that he did. So we got two articles to look at. We're going to look at the Vancouver Canucks, what they need, why they may trade Miller instead of someone else, or at all. And then we're going to look at the five teams that he may be traded to and why. We even got an article on a few other things as well. So we're going to take a look at all that. Buckle yourself in. Not before you hit the little subscribe button, though. Don't buckle up yet. Subscribe, then buckle up. Subscribe, buckle. Good. Excellent. Well done. Well done. You're good at that. Okay. Let's take a look at first article. Canucks president Rutherford says, team not headed towards total rebuild. Notice the word total there. Still rebuild. It's not total rebuild. They not really tell you all that much. So they're not going to do an Arizona. Adam Laskaris wrote this, by the way. Uh, fine writer. I like to follow him a lot. I use this material quite often because he usually has a lot to back it up. He's got direct quotes. And quite often these things happen that he writes. He's very good. Uh, so this is Rutherford saying it's obvious. This was during the season. It's obvious that we need to get better in certain places. We're trying to transition the team on the fly, not tear it all down for a total rebuild. Uh, we need to get more out of our bottom six forward. So that tells us something, right? They need depth. Um, they're playing okay. They're giving us what they got, but they, uh, they're not doing it totally. They're just not doing it. They're certainly not bringing the offense. Who was bringing the offense? Scoring 40 of the 81 goals were J.T. Miller, the aforementioned J.T. Miller, Connor Garland, Bo Horvat, and Brock Besser. Bo Horvat and Brock Besser are up for contracts. Besser's up right now. Horvat is in another year. And J.T. Miller. So you're thinking, well, why would they trade J.T. Miller if they want more offense since he's their best offensive player? Because specifically, he said more offense from their depth. They need more depth. But you could just go out and get free agents, but we'll look at why that's not likely and many other things in this video. They need to get more out of their bottom six forwards. Um, yeah, they, they, uh, they said they'll, they're going to wait. Uh, hopefully they'll have a general manager in place. They do have a general manager in place now. And, uh, which is Patrick Alvin and we'll look at him as well. Okay. So there's one. They want depth. Now we're going to look at contract talks with Mr. J.T. Miller. Uh, everyone knows the price will be high and probably too high. That is a problem. This is uh, Chris Wassel oh, from NHLRumors.com. Great writer. Check him out. Excellent writer. Um, the trade merry go round goes on. Yes, these rumors have been going on and on, hence the reason why I did the trade rumors before the deadline even. They just keep on coming back. 
But we're going to negotiate with this agent in this offseason. I think this is Alvin that is talking here. And we're going to negotiate what works for the Canucks, not only for now, but for the long term. If both sides can come to an agreement, then JT Miller will be here in the long term, pretty much stating the obvious. If the numbers get out of whack, I don't know what whack is, but if it's out of it, then we have to make a non-emotional decision. In other words, we realize there's going to be fans that's not going to be popular to anybody and try to get assets. Okay? So, what is the number? Well, if you look at centers in the league right now, and I'm not going to go through all of it because it'll make this video too long. On average, a number one center is making about $8 million a year. And we're going to look at JT Miller and his numbers right now and decide whether that is a number that would make sense. So, and if that was going to make sense for the Vancouver Canucks. Also, though, we want to talk a little bit in this article. There was a package during said trade deadline that was rumored to be Braden Schneider, Philip Heedle, and a first round pick. Uh, that does not appear to be enough. Well, I'm going to say this. I'm going to put my own little spin on this. That might not have been enough at the deadline. And the reason why that was, was Vancouver was still in a playoff race. I find it highly unlikely that that's not enough now. I, I just, at the deadline, they were in a playoff race. They can always revisit it in the off season. But if it's more than that, great for Vancouver. This seems like a very fair deal. Honestly, if you don't have the owners breathing down your neck that you want to make the playoffs and make that extra playoff money, I'm doing that deal myself, personally. I love Schneider. I can't believe the Rangers are even offering up Schneider with Hedel in a first. I think it's a great offer, and I would have did it. But, and maybe they, now, you're going to notice that the New York Rangers aren't part of this, and I'll, and I'll tell you why right now. It might, might have made sense at the deadline, but after seeing Hedl playing in the playoffs now, I don't think they revisit this. I think they get, can let Hedl keep on go, building off of what he already has. Hence the reason why the Rangers aren't part. But stick with me here because you're going to see the five teams that are. Now, let's go over to JT Miller. JT Miller made had 99 points in 80 games last year. The difficulty is before that he had 46 that before that, he had just over a point a game in 2019-20. There's been some inconsistency here as far as points. But there's little doubt that 99 points in 80 games is a number one center. Whether or not a team believes that he can do that again remains to be seen. But I'm positive there's going to be a team out there that are going to at least give it a shot that he's a number one center. Why? Because number one centers are hard to come by. If you go through the free agency list this year, there isn't a number one center out there. Trocheck maybe. And that's not a number one center. So he's going to be one of the biggest value items out there of free agents or trade value probably, maybe even the biggest, certainly at the center position. Teams that are looking for center, the most valuable position in one of the most valuable positions is arguably defense and center, goaltender, of course. But centers are hard to come by, especially number ones. They're going to be offering a lot, and he's going to be much sought after. Now, again, he's not going to get $8 million this year. He's got one more year in his contract at $5 million. So... One more year in his contract at $5 million is also going to be beneficial to many teams because they get to get a cheap number one center for one year to fit under the cap, and then maybe after that sign him up and see how he looks and all those sort of things like that. All these are a big, huge, a big advantage for Vancouver. So let's look at Vancouver in general themselves. Uh, okay, now why would they be trading JT Miller, you might ask? He's got one year at $5 million, as we see right here, just over $5 million a year. But they have only $11 million this year in cap space, and next year, oh, whopping 35 Yeah, sure, but here's the problem. They have Bo Horvat to sign, and after that, they're going to have Elias Peter. 
Pedersen to sign. And they're going to have to sign Brock Besser this year at $11 million, at whatever he's going to get. He's not going to get $11 million with their $11 million, and then fill out the roster after that. Brock Besser, if they decide to sign him, I heard it was possible they could trade him both. But if they do have to sign him, he's going to come in at a pretty big number because he's already he was already making close seven close to seven million. So they're going to have to give him a qualifying offer at almost eight for a long term contract. This adds up, and they have to decide which guys they're going to sign and which guys they are not going to be able to sign. Um, and I think if you're going to do that, I think if Vancouver is going to do this, they're probably going to go with their younger players. Bo Horvat, who also is going to need a contract, he's probably going to come in at about the same as JT Miller, seven or eight million dollars a year, maybe six and a half, seven, something like that. Um, is younger, he's already their captain. And I imagine they're invested in him for the longer term than they would at a JT Miller, who on the open market probably can get seven years at seven or eight million dollars a year if he really puts it out there to uh, if he really pits every team against each other enough. There's going to be teams that want to win now that'll be desperate to get a guy like JT Miller in there. Now, if he wants to sign for six for five or something like that, yeah, Vancouver will do it. I don't know about you, but I ain't doing that. You're going to give up, what, two, two times 10, 12, the $14 million because you like Vancouver? I like a lot of places. I don't think I like any place enough to give up $14 million. Just me. And I just don't see Vancouver being able to fit him in amongst everybody else, especially when... They've got a defense to work on here. Quinn Hughes, Ekman Larson, and Myers just ain't going to do it. They're going to have to add down here heavy. Heavy to be a team that is going to be able to make the playoffs. It's Furrow, Shen, Dermott, the list goes down. This defense is nowhere near good enough. So I imagine we're going to see, I think JT Miller probably isn't going to be in the plans. They're going to save that money for people. that. And now, he, again, as we already heard, Rutherford said that they'll be looking for prospects and picks to get more depth through the roster. And we'll look at that real quick, and then we'll move on to the five teams. That's the other problem. Pod Colson will move, is young, he'll move up. But Dickinson's gone. Nils Hoglander is okay. We don't know how good he's going to be. Uh... There's no offense from Highmore, Lamico, Lockwood. You know, their overall depth for offense is not very good. So if they can get some in a trade, I think they'll go that way. So let's look at the five teams that he may go to. One of the things we must remember is that, uh, and the reason why we have Columbus as the first team, is he is from Ohio, Mr. Miller. JT Miller. And uh, after having guys like Panarin and uh, um, Dubois, sorry, these big name guys leave Columbus, it seems I would think that having a guy from Columbus that is a home guy that already, that grew up here would be a big advantage for them. So I do have Columbus as the first team. I actually think they're more of the unlikely team because they're kind of in a rebuild mode. However, you got Kekalainen, who you just never know what this guy's going to do. I imagine he doesn't want to rebuild forever, so it's possible. Also, the return, I don't know if it's going to be as good as what other return you may get. Jack Roslovich would probably have to be part of this deal. I'm sure they'll be asking for Cole Sillinger. Uh, maybe Alexander Tessier. Roslovich, Tessier, and you would hope a first-round pick. Maybe throw in a defenseman like Gavin Bayreuther or 
a prospect like, well, if you could get Corson Kuhlman's, I don't know if they'd be very, very happy to give that up. But it's going to take something like that. Tessier, Roslovich, their first round pick this year, and a prospect. Would you do that, Columbus Blue Jackets fans? Now you're getting a number one center to play with Patrick Lyonet, and you've got Miller, Lyonet, Voracek, and then Jenner, Nyquist, Boquist. Of course, you got Sillinger coming up, and uh, Shinnikov moves up in the third line, but you got a beast of a center. I'm not sure that's the best for this organization, to tell you the honest truth, and nothing would surprise me coming from Kekalainen. He's one of the best drafters in the world. He's, a, he's an absolute genius when it comes to drafting. He's like the Wayne Gretzky of drafting. So I think he wouldn't be, I, he wouldn't be opposed to adding somebody like Miller and trusting his drafting, his team and development team to just keep on bringing in player after player after player. So they lose a first this year, but they become good now. And I'm pretty sure the Columbus Blue Jackets ownership doesn't want to be sitting there being bad for a long time. They're not in a market that flocks to the games as it is, let alone when they're bad. Okay, next, Carolina. And the reason why I have Carolina here for the most part is that Miller is a ranger, was a ranger, I should say. He played with the likes of Brady Shea, Stepan, Ranta, Faust. I mean, they have so many ex-Rangers on this team. And it seems that he's sort of doing that, that they're doing that on purpose. Brandon Smith, to build a core, a family group of players that'll play for a little less money and play in Carolina to build a culture there. And uh, I think JT Miller would be pretty privy and pretty and like that idea. Who wouldn't? Who wouldn't like the idea to go play with hockey with all the friends that you already have? Uh, so it, I think it works for Carolina, and it also works for Carolina in the sense that they are losing Trocheck probably this year. It doesn't sound like they're too happy with what Vincent Trocheck is looking for for money. Uh, I think he would make less than J.T. Miller, but. JT Miller, Trocek has never even come close to almost 100 points like JT Miller has. And for an extra million, you can get a second line center that even could play first line, also can play wing. So mix and match. And Brenda Moore loves the guys that can play all over the place. See, right or left, left or right, Michis. Uh, but now, what's the return? I think just well, who the guy I mentioned, Marty Nietzsche, would be one of them. Um, it, 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 they kind of soured on Nietzsche throughout the year, it seemed. He was playing fourth line minutes. He was out in, he, even out of the lineup a little bit. It was actually kind of surprising. I'm really a big fan of him. But if they had an opportunity to get a JT Miller that fits into the culture and can possibly get 100 points, which nobody even came close to doing in their lineup, I think they'd at least be interested. So you got Nietzsche, maybe somebody like Jack Drury, and they don't have a first-round draft pick, but they have a defenseman that I know my friend, Lorne, who's on my live stream all the time. Sub up, by the way, you fans out there, Carolina. Sub up and come part of my live stream uh, so you can be part of the live stream. Plus, you can hear all of this. Nikishin. Alexander Nikishin. If I could get Nikishin, Nietzsche, and Drury, I would do that deal if I was Vancouver. I don't know if I would do that deal as Carolina, to tell you the honest truth. But I think something like that is what's going to be needed. So Carolina fans, tell me what you think. You want a big, that number one stud center, or at least a 1B beside, beside Behind Aho, you saw what happened in the playoffs. They couldn't score, man. Carolina couldn't score a lot of the time. They need help up front, no doubt about it. He would certainly be a help. And you got to give something up to get something. You just got to. Okay, Ottawa <coughs> is next. And why Ottawa, you might say? I got a little bit 
here for Ottawa. This was back, Ottawa's looking to trade first round pick for an impact player. I think the Ottawa Senators, they've got, they, they drafted a lot of prospects. They have a good young team. And it sounds like they're looking, and this is not a, a Rob Ellis, excellent writer as well. Um, Wayne Scanlon of Sportsnet reports that they're opening open to trading their first round pick. I heard this a little while ago. I looked up this article. I haven't heard anybody deny it out of Ottawa, and it was on Sportsnet. So they mentioned a couple guys here like Konechny and Kevin Fiala that could be part of it. But if we look at Ottawa's roster, first of all, we don't need to worry about their cap space. They have tons. I don't know if they're willing to spend to the cap. But Miller would automatically become, uh, they, I think he would play wing here. Either Stutzla could play wing on the left side, Miller on the mid, in the middle, but he would all, all automatically add an offensive uh, development that they didn't have before. There, there was just, Ottawa is a great team as far as work ethic is concerned. The, TJ Smith is, has his team going, uh, J, uh, Smith, uh, JT Smith, Smith has his team going balls out every game. Play with a lot of heart, but offense is a problem. And bringing in JT Miller would be a huge boost to an offense that kind of sputters some of the time. Now, who would be going back and returning this? And tell me, Ottawa Senators fans, do you want this to happen? Do you want to just wait for guys like so, some of the younger players to come up here, like Oliver jo uh, Johansson or Yakov Novak? <coughs> that it's it's actually not super deep on offense for Ottawa as far as guys that are ready to come up and play right now. And they've drafted a whole bunch of players that I'm sure will be on their way. And I think they're just getting a little bit impatient to start winning here with guys like Kachuk, Batherson, Stutzla, Pinto. Although somebody has to go back, so who's going to go back in this? It depends. It could be Joshua Norris, but I, I, I don't know. His He had 35 goals in 66 games. I think they would try to go with a guy like Shane Pinto, who was injured last year. I love him. I think he's a fantastic player. And I think he, Vancouver would think he was a great, a, a good pickup as well. Um, then they could use Formington down on the third line and put JT Miller up there, either with Stutzla on the wing or at center. And they've got a second line that can actually start potting some goals on a regular basis and give Tim Stutzla somebody to play with. Uh, of course, that wouldn't be it. It would be Shane Pinto possibly Artem Zub and their first round pick, which is seventh overall in this year's draft. Something of that nature. If Vancouver really likes who they can get at number seven here, uh, I think that they may jump at this deal. I'm not sure it's as good as other ones. I don't know if they'd have to. Ridley Gregg would be another one that I'd be interested if I was uh, Vancouver. I don't. That whole package would do it for sure. Ridley Gregg first, Artem Zub, and uh, Pinto. And maybe Vancouver gives you something in return as well. Something like that. But there's several things about JT Miller here. He is a very vocal presence in the room. And I should have mentioned this when I was talking about with Vancouver fans. Uh, that could be a problem with a guy like Bo Horvat, who is their captain. Um, might add something to do with why Horvat had a down year this year. It's You really want your captain to be the voice in the room, and it's really hard to be a voice in the room if you have a guy like Miller there. However, here, Brady Kachuk is going to be a voice in the room no matter who else is in the room. You can be assured of that. Nothing to worry about. But Miller keeps teams keeps players accountable. And I'm sure Ottawa would love that type of personality in here. It just suits them to me. Tell me what you think, Ottawa fans. Do you like the idea of Miller, JT Miller, heading to your organization? Sub yourself up. 
and tell me in my YouTube comment section. All right, next, Colorado Avalanche. Okay, this is based on the idea that Nazem Kadri and I got so many people saying JT Miller to Colorado makes sense. I'm actually saying this, bringing this up because I just had so many floods of people messaging me about JT Miller going to Colorado that I thought I would address it. To me, if you're going to take JT Miller, you might as well keep Kadri. I'm just going to say that flat out. Kadri has already played amazing there. He already knows the system well. He's probably going to be asking about the same amount of money. And I think a lot of the reason why I'm getting messages from people about this, it's Colorado fans that just don't want to lose Kadri. And now how are we going to replace him? Well, you're going to replace him with Alex Newhook or somebody like that. Maybe bring in somebody for less money until Newhook is ready. I just can't see JT Miller working here. The good thing about JT Miller, if they decided to do this, I will say one thing about it. Colorado fans, sub yourself up. Tell me what you think. If Joe Sackick was to consider taking JT Miller, the only reason why I see it is because JT Miller can play the wing too. And that would give them more options down the road. But you're going to have to, they have to sign McKinnon. They're already, get, they're already almost close to the cap. If they don't sign Kadri, it's because they just don't have the money to, not because they don't want to sign Kadri. So I don't think Colorado is the greatest choice here, but I thought I'd throw them in here. So I'll go to my last one that I think could be very likely here. And that is the Detroit Red Wings. And I know a lot of people out there are going to be saying the Detroit Red Wings, they're rebuilding, they're rebuilding all that. And they have been, they've been rebuilding for five years now. Why would they want to get a guy like JT Miller? Why would JT Miller want to go there? Well, first of all, JT Miller doesn't have a no trade clause. So he's going to go wherever they trade him to. Although I'm sure they'll talk to him before they do, but Detroit has a team that's ready to blossom right now. Tyler Bertuzzi, who I hear has been on the block, is probably asking for a ton of money. I think it's more of a contract thing than anything. I don't think he'd actually go. Um, but Bertuzzi Larkin, who also needs to, to get signed. So there's a lot of signings that have to happen here. Lucas Raymond. Let's, uh, Lucas Raymond is a kid coming up. Uh, 57 points in his first year. This team is ready to blossom. The only thing really holding them back from what I can see is, first of all, they could use some veteran leadership. If you saw this team through the second half, I think a guy like J2 Miller, who is very vocal in the room and flat out blunt kind of personality, will keep this team honest and make them accountable throughout the season. I think they could really use that. Blasio lost his job, and I think a lot of that had to do with the fact that he didn't have too many guys in the room to be able to help him out as a coach. And you need that. You ask any coach. Having guys in the room that are going to be vocal and keeping people accountable is very important. Um, and having a guy like JT Miller there would do that a lot. He could become their second-line center right away. He would also... Probably helping the Dylan Larkin negotiations to say, you know what, we're almost done here with this rebuild. The poor guy has not been in the playoffs his whole career. Um, I could see him going, are we, like, I can't be rebuilding for the next four years here, right? So you bring in a guy like JT Miller. Now, what's that going to cost you? Well, you really don't need Joseph Valino if you do something like that. So I could see him being part of the deal. Do they really need a first this year? They're in the middle of the road. You could give up their first this year. They got they have tons of prospects coming up. And as we saw, if you watch the whole video, which you should, the Rangers asked, offered Schneider, Heedle, and a first. So we got our center in Valino. I don't know how big they're going to be on Valino. He's 22. He's still got lots of upside. 
could work out really well. First round pick, and you're going to say Gustav Lindstrom. I don't think that's going to be enough. When you look at all the other packages that we've just talked about here in this video, I think you're going to at least need to give up somebody like William Bollander. 32 overall. He's been having a fantastic year in uh, Sweden this year. He's grown up a lot, almost ready. I'm sure they're not going to like the idea of giving him up, but they have Edvinson coming up and anti Tuomisto. Like they've got a lot of prospects coming up on their D right now that they could probably afford to give one up. I know Vancouver loves their Swedes. They get Valeno a first and a rocking prospect like William Volander. That just might be enough. Maybe you got to add a little bit. Maybe Vancouver gives a little bit back. But I really honestly think it's time for Detroit to start bringing in some veterans to really help this team. Not the Stetchers or guys like that. Guys that can play a significant role on the team that can really bring this team up into possible playoff contender status. After the first half last year, this was looking like a contender. But they're so young, it broke down over time. And a guy like JT Miller, I think, will go a long way to help this team grow. Play with Jacob Verana. You don't really need Pius Suter there either. Maybe he's part of the deal. All right, Detroit Red Wing fans, tell me what you think. You think that that uh, – oh, here, let me, let me look at you. You can see my beautiful face. Tell me what you think, Detroit Red Wing. Sub up. Go to my YouTube channel. Tell me if you think I'm crazy or anything like that. What would you like? Would you like JT Miller? And everybody else out there, comment and tell me what you think. I love doing these sort of things. We're going to have we're going to have free agent talk. We're going to be to looking at more trades through the summer, draft, everything. Be part of it. Sub up. Love to see you there. Have a great day everybody. Enjoy the hockey playoffs right now. Okay, bye.